Hello, I'm Eve Bargman from the Department of Medicine, and this is Bill Garant, who is going to be helping us demonstrate the chest exam. When you're examining someone's chest, you start out just by looking at them, by inspection. Normal chest should be wider this way than that way. A normal person, when they're breathing, you can see it's even hard to count the respirations because their chest moves very little in and out. A person who's having respiratory distress, trouble breathing, might have these muscles, the sternocleidomastoid muscles, tightening. They'd be working harder to breathe, breathing visibly. You can see them working hard to breathe out. You can see for Bill that he's sitting very, very comfortably. You can see when someone sits, the clavicles, the collarbones, they should be symmetric. The sternum, the breastbone. There's a small angle in the breastbone here. And right at that angle is where the second rib comes in. That's important to know because you'll listen to the heart immediately below the second rib. When you get done inspecting from the front, most of the lung exam is done inspecting from the back. And so I'm going to ask Bill to turn facing that way so you can see his back while I can. Normally, I just be sitting on the table behind him to do this. So inspecting from the back, again, you can see the spine coming down that's symmetric, the scapulae on both sides, and you can watch his lungs expand and contract. And you can actually palpate at this point. You can touch. I'm going to put my hands on your back and just feel you while you take a breath. You just put one hand on either side, about two to four inches apart. Now let me ask you to take a deep breath in and then back out again. Good. Thank you. And both sides expand very symmetrically in a normal lung. The other thing you can do with your hands, just with your touch, is to check this, what's called phrematis, which is checking the resonance of his words in his lungs, which is, again, normally very symmetric between the two sides. You can do this, I'm going to touch you again, with your hands like this, or with the side of your hands, this side, like that. And then I'm going to ask Bill to say to see 99. 99. And again. 99. And again. 99. Good. Thank you. And they're symmetric again, all three, all the way down the lungs. So that's tactile phrematis, and again, that's normal between the two sides. The next thing you do in the lung is percussion. So percussing, I use these two fingers, the index and long finger, the dominant hand, percussing against the long finger of the other hand. Just that finger's on the chest, and you can percuss down and figure out where the bottom of the lung is. Now take a deep breath in and hold it. Good. And let back out again, all the way out, and hold it again. And you can breathe normally now. Good. So he has a very nice lung excursion from one end to the other. I usually just mark this with one finger so you can tell the difference. Now, same thing on the other side. Again, I'll be percussing down to the approximate part of the lung, approximate bottom. Take a deep breath in and hold it. Good. And then back out again. Good, and you can breathe normally again. So again, very nice lung excursion. I know it's about three to five centimeters, and this is very good. Now I know about where the lungs are. I'll listen, and when I listen, stethoscope goes with the earpieces pointing forward, otherwise you can't hear a thing. And you use this side of the diaphragm, the flat side of the stethoscope, to listen to the lungs. And you're comparing two sides. I'll touch you again. Side to side, as you go down, it should sound very similar on both sides. Now take breaths in and out through your mouth. Good. Again. 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 Thank you. And you'll listen at three or four levels going down the line. That's auscultation from the back. Now I'm going to ask Bill to turn around again this way. And I'm actually going to work my way around him. And then put the table at about a 30 to 45 degree angle briefly to show you some things about the heart. Good. Good. My back. Make yourself comfortable, the best you can. Mm -hmm. And before we leave the lungs, 
Let me just show you briefly. You can percuss the lung in the front. So same kind of deep sound. And you do want to listen to the lung in the front as well. The right middle lobe and the left lingula are in the front. And if you don't listen to those, you can miss things. So let me get you to take just two more deep breaths, if you would, here and out. And again. And out. Good. And he takes wonderful deep breaths, but you may actually want to tell somebody to breathe through their mouth to help them out. Now I'm going to move from the lung to the heart exam. And the first thing I'll do at this angle is check a jugular venous pulse. The jugular venous pulse we're looking for is actually deep. So you see not the vein itself, but the movement on the side of the neck. And you need a little pen light. And you shine your pen light across at an angle across this little hollow just behind the sternocleidomastoid muscle to see the pulsation. At this angle, you can just barely see it on a healthy person, whereas someone who had heart failure, for instance, you'd see it very prominently all the way up to the angle of their jaw. Now I'm going to actually lie him back flat, which is the best way to listen to the heart. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Checking the heart. First, again, you inspect. See if you can see a visible impulse or a visible lift of the chest anywhere, which would be a sign of heart disease. Normally, you really can't see the heart impulse at all in the front. You'll palpate with the flat part of your fingers, always from the patient's right hand side, my hand here. Usually right in this area here, you can feel the point of maximal impulse. You can feel it come up against your hand in a very small area right here at the mid-clavicular line or even a little bit to the inside. Once you've found that, you also want to check here just to the left of the sternum to see if there's a lift or a thrill. And just put your hand across the base, the top part of the heart, again to feel for a lift. Percussion, most people don't percuss the heart actually. It gives you a little bit of information, but not much more than you know already. So you move fairly quickly to auscultation of the heart. We auscultate the heart in four areas. The two areas I've pointed out to you before, to the right and the left of the sternum, just below that second rib. Then in the fourth intercostal space, two spaces down to the left of the sternum, and then right over the point of maximal impulse and you'll auscultate with both the diaphragm and the bell. So I'm going to listen now. You want to listen to several beats of the cardiac cycle at each of those locations. Last thing you can do lying down is just check all of the pulses. Dr. Gazewood showed you how to check the radial pulse and the brachial pulse, which is here. The carotid pulse is a little safer checked lying down. It's just below the angle of the jaw, right here. The femoral pulse is right in the groin. And on the feet, two important pulses posterior tibial loops right behind the medial malleolus, so just put all your fingers here, and you can feel it come up toward you. And for the dorsalis pedis, you have to pull the foot up a little bit, dorsiflex it a bit, and feel right about at the level of the second toe, the second metatarsal, and you'll feel that pulse. So in summary, examining the chest, first you inspect from the front, and you move behind the patient to inspect, you check thoracic excursion with your hands, check for fremitus, percussion of the diaphragmatic margins, auscultation, comparing the sides with the diaphragm of the stethoscope, moving to the front at 30 to 45 degrees, checking jugular venous pulse and auscultation in the front of the chest, and then lying down, inspection of the heart, 
Palpation with your hands for the PMI and for the cordium. Auscultation in all four locations with the diaphragm and the bell of the stethoscope. For the peripheral pulses, the radial, brachial, carotid, dorsalis pedis, and posterior tibial. And when you're examining a patient, you'll be checking both sides and comparing them. Thank you very much. Sir.